and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. This is the day that the Lord has made that us rejoice and be glad in it. Once again, we are thankful to God for the opportunity to share his word. Always thankful to those of you who love his appearing. Before I, I begin our lesson this morning, I have one question that I want to ask. And that is, what is your go-to during this pandemic? In other words, uh, how are you responding uh, to what's going on at this time? Uh, can you confidently say that in spite of what's happening, you are confident that you're going to be okay? Uh, it's really a tough question for some people to answer. Uh, Paul himself had to uh, comfort a group of people who found themselves uh, having these same concerns. In Romans the eighth chapter, uh, Paul described the present suffering of these children as, 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 as they uh, live on this side of heaven. In verses 18 through 20, he uh, mentions their groaning, the fact uh, uh, that they desire to escape the trouble of this life and, and, and to see God in person. Uh, he tries to uh, bring them some sort of consolation and sharing with them the hope that they have in Christ Jesus. And, and, and he explains that we should wait uh, for the sure uh, hope that is coming when our bodies will be resurrected and we will be with God in glory. Uh, in verse 25 of Romans 8, he says, But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Paul is saying here, if we confidently, excuse me, trust in what God has promised, we should wait for it patiently. But the question that many have is, while we are in this wait pattern, if you will, how do we deal with what's happening now? Can we be assured that we will get through this? In verse 28 of this same chapter, uh, Paul uh, seems to uh, give them the promise of comfort, where he says, and yes, uh, we know that all things work together uh, for good to those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to his purpose. Family, this verse infers that we must have faith. We must trust in what God has said, recognizing, uh, being confident that he will deliver in all of his promises. Uh, once read somewhere where someone said that faith has its consequences. And, and, and I, I found that statement to be quite interesting because uh, the definition of the word consequences uh, means a result or effect of an action or a condition. In other words, how we react to a situation really demonstrates our faith or our lack of it. It was James that once uh, said, listen, you show me your faith without words, and I'll show you my faith by my words. Family, it's the responsibility of the child of God to live out our faith and not just profess it. Uh, we uh, are to show forth who we are and how we react in difficult situations really will determine uh, who we are. Now, text this morning, Peter, instead of trying to give details as to how this works, chooses to show us some people who made it work. Uh, here we will see three reactions to 
uh, difficult situation, then, and, and, and it's our responsibility to take note of these and use them as examples in our lives. In other words, how they reacted is how you and I are supposed to react. This morning, as we continue our theme, I want to speak to you from the subject, the consequences of our faith. Pray with me, please. Father in heaven, we come to you at this time, thanking you so much for this day and for your blessings. Father, thank you once again for the opportunity to share your word. Father, as always, I ask that you remove the messenger that the message might be heard. Father, give me the confidence, the conviction, the boldness it takes this morning to proclaim your message. And open up the hearts of those that are listening, for I pray they receive it with gladness. Challenge us by your word. This prayer we do ask in your son's name. As we look at this text this morning, we, we will see the reaction of uh, uh, three different people. And the first reaction we see comes from verse 7, where we are to wait. Uh, in verse 7, Peter says, Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Watch this. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rains. You know, it has been said that if a man is impatient, <laughs> he better not become a farmer. Because see, it, 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 it takes great patience uh, 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 to uh, be able to master this type of skill. Uh, because see, crops don't appear overnight uh, unless uh, you try to grow weeds, that is. Uh, and the farmer has no control over the weather. Your know, rain may come, they may not come. Uh, it, it really all depends on what's happening. Uh, uh, too much rain, and uh, it will cause the crops to rot. Not enough rain, and it will cause them to burn up. The farmer must have patience with the seed and the crop. We see it, it takes time for plants to grow. Uh, so what must we do uh, when, when, when we're, when we're uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, see something happen in our lives, when, we're, when we are, 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 are trying uh, to mature, are, are trying to overcome a situation, what are we to do? Notice again, our text says, see how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. The word wait here does not mean to sit back to pause and do nothing. It literally means to look for and expect. What is this farmer looking for? According to our text, he's looking for the precious fruit. Uh, and he or she is confident that it will come. Listen. Like a farmer, uh, we are to uh, 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 be patient and, 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 and uh, ask God to give us what we need until that which we are trying to see grows, grows. Listen, when things get tough, uh, God is actually producing a harvest in our lives. Uh, he wants uh, to uh, have spring forth the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. It, it, it is through uh, uh, the difficult moments, through, through the time of harvesting, through the time of, 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 of sowing, that uh, the fruit that is within us begins to mature. And you and I have to wait on it. We must be patient. And the only way that, that this, this, the, these, excuse me, fruit will grow is through trials and tribulations. The Apostle Paul to the Church of Galatians that once said, listen, in due time, we shall reap if we faint not. Family, the harvest is worth the waiting for. This farmer here uh, is patient, uh, expectantly anticipating uh, the harvest because it is precious. He recognizes.
recognizes that it will bring great wealth, uh, great joy to him. And, 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 and so uh, he will do whatever is necessary to see it come forth. In that same manner, uh, you and I must be patient, even during difficult times, when God is, in fact, trying to grow us, trying to de uh, develop that that is within us. Uh, we also must recognize, understand that what he is doing is valuable for us, and, and we will not have it. We will not succeed if we are not patient. We must trust in the Lord and lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him, and he will, in fact, direct our path. It was the prophet Isaiah that said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our second reaction is found in verse 10 of our text, where we are to witness. Peter says, my brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. You know, it's interesting that these great men of God proclaim the Lord's name with power, yet they too suffer. You know, Satan would lead us to believe that the reason why we suffer is because of sin and unfaithfulness. But I'm here to let you know that sometimes we suffer because we are, in fact, faithful. It's the Apostle Paul to his young son Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 that says, Yes, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Family, we must not think that obedience automatically produces ease and pleasure. Uh, even in obedience, there will be suffering. Listen, it was suffering that uh, brought Jesus to a point to where he was obedient, according to the text, where he learned obedience. And that obedience led him to the cross. But what is our lesson that's learned from the prophets this morning? Family, they remind us that God cares for us uh, as we go through our sufferings for his sake. Listen, because we believe in the Lord, because we follow him, because uh, uh, we live for him, we will find ourselves in moments contrary to this world. There will even be moments, family, where people will actually hate you. But Jesus said, listen, uh, try not to worry about that, because before they hated you, they hated me. So the prophets are a picture uh, of what you and I go through when, when we uh, 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 acknowledge Jesus as our king. Throughout the Old Testament, you hear the different prophets that, that proclaim the message of God and still found themselves in difficult situations, even unto death. I'm reminded of Elijah when he was called to go to King Ahaz and he proclaimed the word of the Lord that there would be a drought that would last three and a half years. That was a difficult time for them. But guess who also suffered during that time? Elijah. But in the midst of that suffering, God was there with him taking care of him. Uh, God would protect him and give him great victories as a result of him trusting God. You know, it has been said that God will never lead us where his grace cannot keep us. Um, why is it that those who represent God often have to endure trials. There has to be a reason for it. Um, 
I believe one of the reasons is so that their lives might back up their message. You know, family, our example of patience in times of suffering can be a testimony to others. When our friends and families, even our enemies, see us react in ways that are contrary to the norm, it sends a message. We have to be an example to the world. Just as Christ is an example to us. Listen to 1 Peter chapter 2. Starting in verse 21, the Bible says, For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should watch this follow in his steps. Verse 22, who committed no sin nor deceit found in his mouth, who when he was reviled did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges rightly. Father Peter tells us that Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Jesus is our example a one who endured punishment unjustly. Our text says when he was reviled, he did not revile in return. He was talked about, laughed at, spit upon, beat, and yet, even though he had the power to retaliate, chose not to. Instead, he decided to take punishment that was undeserving of him. The prophet Isaiah said that he was wounded by transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He said the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes, family, you and I are healed. Christ did not revive in return. Watch what he did do. Our text says he suffered, but he did not threaten but commit himself to him who judges rightly. Instead of retaliating, the scriptures say that he committed himself to him who judges rightly. Who's the him? The father. The word committed here is a Greek word, uh, paradidum. It means to hand over to an authority. It includes the idea of being given over to another power or to another's power. My friends, Jesus, the Son of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, could have exacted his power if he wanted to. But because he came down here to be an example for you and I, instead of reviling, instead of retaliating, instead of using his power, he gave himself over to another power and allowed that power to give him the strength he need, needed, excuse me, to endure. And now that he's back home, he recognizes, understands, appreciates the struggle that you and I go through and recognize there will be moments in our lives where it's going to be too much for us. And when those moments come, he tells us, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We have an opportunity here to be powerful witnesses for the Lord. Our lives, family, are witnesses. How we react in times of troubles speak volumes. The old saying that says actions speak louder than words. Family, our reactions 
also speak loudly. And finally, the third reaction is found in verse 11 of our text, where we are to worship. Verse 11 says, Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. Uh, you have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Our text says, Indeed, we count them blessed who endure, which leads us to understand that I mean, you cannot endure unless there are trials. Listen, this, 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 this endurance that we go through brings us blessings, but if we don't allow that which uh, 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 develops us to refine us, we will not benefit from what God allows to happen. When we fight against what God is using for our good, then we are in fact Defeated. Understand something. I mean, there can be no victories without battles. There can be no peace without battles. Um, you know, a lot of our blessings actually come in the midst of our battles. But James uh, taught that there is a blessing after we have endured. And he uses the example of Job to prove it. For those who believe our suffering is a result of things that we do uh, uh, bad in our lives, the book of Job refutes that idea. You know, Job was a righteous man, uh, and yet he suffered. It's interesting because God found no evil in him. Satan could not find any evil in him. Job teaches us that God has a higher purpose in suffering than just punishing sins. Listen to Proverbs chapter 17, verse 3. The Bible says, The refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tries. Listen, family. What fire does to know, the Lord does to men's heart. He purifies them, uh, removing the dross and bringing forth good. Listen, Job's suffering was not a punishment, it wasn't a sign of God's anger. What Job was going through was not deprivation, family. It was an operation. Listen to Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. The Bible says, For it is God who works, uh, or who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Listen, God uses these moments to operate on us. Like a skilled doctor using the scalpel to cut out certain things. God uses trials and tribulations to cut out the things that should not be in us. And, and when he has done this, or even while he is doing this, it brings him pleasure. Because his work is actually improving. These trials, family, as we draw to a conclusion, uh, when, when they are used for God's purpose, when, 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 when God allows uh, the fire to refine us, they bring him pleasure. But you and I, who understand that God is using this not for our punishment, but rather for our pleasure, when we experience them, should praise him, should acknowledge him for who he is, 
uh, uh, it was the Apostle Paul that says, I was teaching them, oh brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable form of service or worship. He says, listen, we give ourselves, we dedicate ourselves to God. It's a form of worship to live this life for God. And sometimes in living this life, we will find ourselves in difficult moments. But in those moments, we can still praise God if we trust him and recognize that what he is doing is for our good. I want to leave you with three, three, three statements from Job, who probably uh, suffered in ways that no other man besides Christ ever suffered. There are three passages that show his, his incredible commitment to worship in spite of his suffering. Job chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, the Bible says that Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshiped. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job chapter 13, verse 15, the Bible says, Though he slay me, I will hope in him. Verse, uh, excuse me, Job chapter 19, verse 25, a very familiar passage of scripture. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last day, he will stand upon the earth. Family, in closing, when we are attacked, it is easy for us to be impatient and, 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 and run ahead of God and lose out on our blessings. But we like the Apostle Paul, who found himself struggling with the thorn and, and, and prayed to God that he would remove it, heard God says that, listen, when you are going through what you go through, do not fret, for my grace is sufficient. The Apostle Paul would later say in that same uh, chapter, Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of God may rest upon me. Listen, family, life is rough. Times are tough. But know, if you are a child of God, that he is with you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. But he will give you the strength you need to endure. Trust him. Recognize that he is able to do what we cannot do ourselves. Pray with me, please. Father, have we come to this time thanking you so much for this day and for your blessing. Thank you, Father, even for this moment. We may not know what's going on when you do. But Father, I pray that you help us, Father, to seize this moment and to allow it to do what you purpose it to do. Father, I thank you for knowing all things in advance and using every situation for our good. Father, please bless those who are under the sign of my voice. Keep them in your care. This prayer we do ask in your son's name. Amen. Once again, we are thankful to God for the opportunity to share his word. We hope and pray that we have shared something with you this you are not a child of God. Listen, you come to God by faith, trusting and believing that he is the one that can and will save your soul. Confess his name and we will baptize you in the body of grace of baptism for the remission of your sins. If you are interested in knowing more about Christ, I pray that you will call us. Uh, 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 come to us. Uh, even use our email address and let us know your request. And I, will, I will personally uh, call you and share with you our convictions. May God bless you and may he keep you in his care is my prayer. Thank you for being a part of the Infinite Word Broadcast with Pastor and Evangelist Brother Anthony Stokes and the Compton Avenue Church of Christ located at 9415 Compton Avenue in the city of Los Angeles. We invite you to subscribe to the Infinite Word channel and future broadcasts by clicking on the subscribe button at the bottom of your screen. We'd love to hear from you. 
Let us know your prayer request or Bible questions you may have. Maybe you would like to participate in an online Bible course. Please contact us at the phone number or email address that appears on your screen. Or visit our website and follow the links to let us know your request. Friends, we are bound to give thanks to God always because He chose each of us for salvation by our believing in His Son, Jesus Christ, and being sanctified through the Holy Spirit. He is urging you today, by your hearing of His preached word, to be baptized into His family of believers. Again, thank you for being a part of today's broadcast. We encourage you to share with a friend. Remember always, with God, everything is possible. All power is in His hands. May He keep you in His great love and mercy. Until next week. Thank you.